Thank you for joining me for what I believe is an important chart that shows us quite a bit about the current state of the market. Perhaps there's a trade war looming. The US announced tariffs on steel and aluminum imports. The European Union quickly responded that they're gonna target very select items, each with an important political significance. Kentucky bourbon made in the state of Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Harley-Davidson Motorcycles, one of the most important employers in Speaker of the House Paul Ryan's district. And Levi's Blue Jeans, an important company in Minority Leader of the House Nancy Pelosi's district. What the European Union was saying is we will engage in a trade war if it's thrust upon us. Well, the US response was, if they do that, we'll impose tariffs on European made cars. This is the type of political situation which can take on a life of its own. And US officials seem uncertain about the impact of what they're doing. Speaker Ryan and others, including many leading Republicans, have come out against the tariffs. But Commerce Secretary Ross says tariffs won't matter to consumers. And he quickly went on CNBC with some visual aids to help make his point. Now, what Ross said was he bought a can of soup at the 7-Eleven and it was $1.99. He claims that the price impact of the tariffs will be trivial, not a noticeable thing for consumers. Now, that can's available at Target for 98 cents. Most of us who don't have a $3 billion portfolio don't shop for soup at 7-Eleven if we can avoid it. But it shows perhaps that the, the impact of what they're doing is lost in these stunts because most families buy more than one can of soup a year. The consumer impacts, if we wanna focus solely on canned goods, may not be that significant. It, uh, according to the CPI data, Americans spend a small amount of their income on canned fruits and vegetables, canned soups, and beer to drink at home. Those would be the primary canned goods that are included in the CPI. So the impact of the tariffs may be at about a buck 65. However, food away from home would also go up and other goods would also rise. New cars would become affordable and that would push up used car prices. Appliances would cost more, and this is especially true given that we already have tariffs now imposed on price on appliances. Other costs for businesses would rise because even though a family, for example, will defer the purchase of a new car, companies like UPS cannot defer all of the purchases of new trucks until the tariffs expire. Therefore, they would have to buy under the higher prices, they would then raise their prices. Other companies which receive deliveries will raise their prices. And as we see, this extends way beyond just the price of canned soup. If costs rise just 1% for the average family, that's $590 per year. These impacts would be higher on families with less than the average income. All of this offsets much of the recent tax cut. Now, tariffs aren't new. We've had a long history of tariffs. Here's one of the most famous tariffs. Smoot-Hawley tariff was debated in 1929, became law in 1930, coincided with the most significant stock market decline ever. The stock market bottomed the week that Franklin Delano Roosevelt was nominated to be president and one of FDR's primary campaign issues was that he would get rid of the tariffs. So tariffs may have been important, but economists differ on their role. Some say tariffs had it exasperated the decline by just a small amount. They point to the fact that the Fed 
was tightening the money supply while all this was happening. And that was what caused the Great Depression to be so bad. Well, here we are in 2018. The Fed is set to raise rates three, maybe four times this year. And they're also reducing their balance sheet, reversing quantitative easing. So they're reducing the demand for bonds at the same time the federal government is increasing the supply of bonds through higher deficit spending. All of these factors are intended basically to raise interest rates under economic theory. So here we are in 2018, the Fed is positioned to tighten monetary policy by raising interest rates just like they did in 1930. 